Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan. I have an enormous, as the title says, book haul of hardcover Goosebumps books. It's all classic series. All of them. I have a couple of them already. Uh, some I have, but I don't have the exact edition that's out right now. Uh, I also haven't cut my fingernails <laughs> for my work like I need to do. So they're a little bit long. If you see some nasty looking fingernails, I promise they're not super long, but they're a little long for my taste. Just thought I'd throw that little gross detail out there for you. Make you feel better. Anyway, happy Tuesday. Um, I have a bunch of these, man. I didn't know I was getting as many as I was in this particular haul. Uh, I bought a particular lot of books on eBay, and I didn't realize there was 32 in this pack. I think there's 32 or 30, something like that. But there's a lot of Goosebumps hardcovers in here. Pretty much half of the old classic hard or the old classic Goosebumps series from the 90s that pretty much popularized this R.L. Stein book series. Uh, yeah, lots of cool ones here. Really, really excited to show you. There's a couple of them I'm really stoked I thought I'd never, ever get or ever see in hardcover form or anything. And of course, you can also call these library editions because they're what people had for the library copies because they're a little bit more durable than a paperback book. So that's pretty cool. The first book here is one that everybody keeps talking to me about. There's one of my friends named Grayson the Goosebumps Kid or Goosebumps Fan. Uh, Grayson always talks about this book. He's recommended this book to me a thousand times over. I need to get around and read it at some point. By the way, I'm also sorry about slowing down on the, on the Mummy Marathon. <clears throat> the Mummy Marathon is kind of slowing down because I have so much going on right now. I haven't made any videos on my other channels either just because everything's been so hectic. <laughs> it's been a nightmare, man. There's been so much going on with my family and... Yeah, lots of crazy stuff. So please forgive me for the Mummy Marathon taking forever to get videos out for you guys. I want to apologize for that, sincerely. But uh, anyway, let's get into the book haul. There's a lot of stuff here to show you. I'm going to try to get through them quicker because I don't want to spend a half an hour video talking about all this stuff at one time. Uh, some of these I've read. A big chunk of them I have not. So please avoid spoilers in the comments for me. Anyway, the first book is the one Grayson always recommends to me, A Night and Terror Tower. I love this reissue hardcover copy that came out back in the day that has this orange border on it. It's just beautiful. I mean, I really, really dig that. And of course, the executioner looks really cool here, too. Uh, these books are all from like the 90s. They have like yellow pages, and some of them have pages that have been torn out before that they had to like literally tape into the book again. But again, for like 30 bucks for all of these books, I mean, that's a pretty good deal. It's about a dollar a book. A little bit less than that, actually. But uh, fantastic deal for what I got in this bundle. And there was one time where I got a bundle of Goosebumps books that were hardcover library editions. And some of the books were so stiff in the spine that you couldn't open the book and actually read them comfortably. I want to let you know I looked through every single one of these books and not a single one of them are like that either. So I don't know what happened with the first book lot I got a while back, but uh, these are not like that. This one is another one I enjoyed quite a bit. Uh, it wasn't amazing, but it was pretty good for what it was. Why I'm Afraid of Bees. Yeah, reissue copy once again that has the yellow border on it. Pretty cool looking. Gotta love this old Tim Jacobus artwork. Good stuff. Uh, I did not know this first book was in here. I know the second book is in here, but this is the first book, Deep Trouble. Again, reissue cover. Some of these are reissues, some are not when it comes to the color scheme, because back in the day they had like a white border around them. They were the Signature Series or whatever they were called. I've shown a couple of those. I have a go uh, Ghost Camp copy of the original hardcovers that came out, but these are from the reissue times, like the early 2000s. So uh, it's pretty cool, man. Somebody had a full-blown like collection here. I, f I think from looking at the back of these, these came from the same school system that got rid of them. So I don't know if somebody that used to work there stole all of these, or, or if the school got rid of them and gave them to somebody, and then somebody gave them to me. I don't know. I don't know what happened here, but I'm really stoked about it. Uh, this book here, one of the worst Goosebumps books ever, My Hairiest Adventure. It was silly and had some fun moments to it that were kind of goofy. It was much more enjoyable than the horrible TV episode adaptation of this from the 90s. But uh, the book is not great. Even this disgusting-looking poop brown color. <laughs> Why would you pick that for your book? Oh, so awful looking. Uh, a lot of people's favorite. I really love this one until the ending. I've always said that. The ending has always rubbed me in this weird wannabe Twilight Zone type way. And I love the Twilight Zone, so I know when it works and when it does not work. Because Twilight Zones hit many, many variable, <laughs> varying versions of itself when Serling was involved and when Serling was not involved that showed how desperately Twilight Zone needs Serling. But anyway, this is Welcome to Camp Nightmare. Uh, I think I have a copy of this in hardcover already. Some of these I do think I already own, at least maybe the same exact copy. I don't think I have the exact same thing as this one, but I have something that looks just like this. Uh, but anyway, I've read this pretty good. Just don't like the ending all that much. The, the last like big plot twist in the final page. 
Very, very goofy. Uh, one of my big time favorites, Welcome to Dead House, which is the first book ever from Goosebumps. The first one ever published and ever put out into the public in the 90s. I think it was 1992 when the first Goosebumps book came out, which is this. So a hardcover copy of this. I was thinking about buying a hardcover copy of this, but I didn't want just the newer versions, you know, um, uh, hardcover copy. So I'm glad to have this. This is pretty sick to have as part of my collection since I really enjoyed this book. That's a pretty scary book, honestly. Especially the, the one particular scene with the stadium. Ugh. Uh, this book here was one of the ones that I bought this book lot immediately for, and I was dumbfounded to find this. I can't believe how decent the condition is on this. It has a little bit of a rugged corner or two, but man, it looks great. Haunted Mask. The purple cover and everything, man. It is just a beautiful reissue copy of Haunted Mask and hardcover library edition. I never thought in a million years I'd find Haunted Mask on a hardcover copy. That just baffled me when I saw this the other day. Uh, I'm so thankful again to the person who sent me all of these in the mail. Thank you so much for this awesome haul I got to buy off of you. Great collection parts for my collection. I'm pretty stoked about all these. Uh, Deep Trouble 2. I talked about having the first one in here. I did not know the first one was in this collection of books, but now I have Deep Trouble 2 in hardcover, which I really dug. I like this more than the first book. I have a, I have a fear of fish, <laughs> for anybody who doesn't know. Uh, I don't like being out in ocean water and stuff, and this... This has some really spooky stuff in there if you're afraid of fish. So, check that one out. Uh, the Girl Who Cried Monster, one that everybody recommends to me as well, and I've never read it. I plan on reading it at some point, but it's going to be a while till I get around to it. Again, hectic, hectic, hectic summertime. But uh, Girl Who Cried Monster looks pretty great. Heard some really wild stuff about that book from people like Goosebumps Ozzy fan on YouTube. Now, these two, I'm very, very excited for. I never thought in a million years I'd be able to get my hands on these, and God allowed it, so I'm really stoked. I bought the first book of this three-book series from the old classic Goosebumps series. One of my favorite villains, if not my very favorite villain of all time, from Goosebumps or anything for that matter. Uh, I have the first hardcover in large print and in smaller print of Not a Living Dummy. And then I happen to be looking at this book lot, and two of the books that also caught my eye, aside from Haunted Mask and one of the other books in here, was Not a Living Dummy 2 in hardcover, which is very, very torn up and very, very much red and just beat up and destroyed. But I'm glad to have a hardcover copy of this because you won't find this very often. I've been looking for a while for these hardcovers. I've never seen this one, ever. Uh, and then you have three, Not a Living Dummy 3, which is my favorite of the dummy books, currently at least. And uh, this one looks pretty old too and ragged. The, the front portion of the book, as you can tell, is like actually coming out. But it's taped back in, so it's in place, but... Oh man, I was so stoked to see these two because I wanted all three. Um, and I have the first one, like I said. I got some black dirt on my hand. But uh, the fact that I have these now, all three of these original dummy books in hardcover, is so exciting. I, I just, I can't even tell you how pumped I am to have those. I'm so thankful and so blessed to have that. Uh, I have this one in hardcover already. I know for sure. Maybe even two different hardcovers. But I love it. It's one of my favorites ever. Shocker on Shock Street. It's such a great, great book. I guess I'll put this as another copy in my collection of books that I have for, like, secondary readings when I go out places. Just to, you know, it'll be copies that I don't care if they get destroyed or not. But uh, Shocker on Shock Street. Really great book. Really fun summertime. If you're a horror movie fan, like a series like Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th and stuff like that, you'll love this book. It has such a great feel for fans of horror and horror movies specifically because there's so many cool things here it has like this one day at horror land type of feel to it. it really adds a lot of atmosphere to it that i really dig uh this one i've not read yet lou at one point in a comment actually spoiled this for me he didn't know it was it wasn't his fault i'm hoping by the time i get around to reading this i'll forget what the spoiler was but uh, i have not currently but i am excited to read this i was going to read this last year did not get around to it because of the crazy uh what was this stuff called? It was it was a thing that was happening here on YouTube. I can't remember. It was like this crazy situation where we all thought our channels were going to get deleted and all of our videos were going to get us in jail and stuff and find, um, was it Copa? I think it was Copa that we were all talking about back in the end of last year. It was supposed to be January 1st where all this stuff started coming through and kind of ruining YouTube. And it hasn't affected anybody, which really surprised me. And I ended up coming back to YouTube in like February or March or something because it looked like everything was okay now. Uh, I stopped reading all the Christmas books I was reading from Goosebumps because of what was going on with that Copa situation. And then there was this book that I wanted to read desperately, and I plan on reading it this year, God willing, doing a review and everything for my channel. Beware of the Snowman. Really glad to have a hardcover copy of this just because I love Goosebumps Christmas stuff when they do it. 
it's not very commonly that's mostly Halloween and just basic scary stories but there's been one Easter Goosebumps book to my knowledge which was Egg Monsters from Mars which is very good and then there's Christmas stuff which there's like maybe three or four of these I don't know um, yeah really excited to have this looks cool I like that baby blue color you know <clears throat> the blob that ate everyone I believe I have this ooh, a little puff thing from the box fell out I believe I already have this in hardcover, but you know, it came with a lot, so I took it and I'm I'm glad I have it just in case. I think it'll be good. I'm not sure, but I hope it will be. Uh, this one here, I never owned the original Tim Jacobus, or not the, the Tim Jacobus art. This is one of the books that Tim Jacobus did not illustrate back in the day. He did the newest, the not the newest, newest, but one of the newer reissues from 2005 or 2003 or whatever. He did the reissue cover for that. This is the Be Careful What You Wish For. Um, I believe this is not the Tim Jacobus art. No, this is Tim Jacobus. It says right there. Uh, this is Tim Jacobus' version of the Be Careful What You Wish For artwork that was not the original cover because Tim Jacobus was not the first cover artist for Goosebumps. Uh, he was kind of being decided with somebody else that they were looking at. And they chose Tim, so I'm thankful for that. His art is always really good. This one's okay. I know a lot of people prefer the original. I don't even remember what the original looked like off the top of my head. But I like this one. It's good. Very spooky. Never read the book. I have a copy of it with the reissue cover. The newest, newest reissue. And uh, again, I haven't read it, so I don't really know anything to say about it. I hope it's good, but that's about it. This one I really, really, really had a rough time reading. Um, was not the best thing I've ever read in my life. It was okay. Had its moments, but it was mostly garbage. Uh, the TV episode is really, really wild. I think I liked that more than the book. I can't remember. It's been a while. It's been a couple of months. But uh, Don't Go to Sleep. It was all right. A uh, little... little constantly random type of book oh well it came from beneath the sink i think i also have a hardcover copy of this maybe even the same color with the dark blue i could be wrong but uh i've got it i haven't read the book i don't know might be good i, I know there's also a, a tv episode of that an adaptation uh this one here i think i have in hardcover i believe at least the newer book maybe I don't know, but uh, Let's Get Invisible. I read this a while back. Really, really good book. Really creepy, creepy book. Just the whole concept with the mirror in the attic and stuff. Attics, basements, mirrors, all that stuff freak me out. It's just, I don't get like crippling, terrified, you know? Like I don't I don't just stop being able to move or anything in real life, but uh, that stuff bothers me. Just just some of the things, I'm, I'm a writer, you know? So certain things hit me in a way that, and bother me in a way that most people don't get affected by. Uh, and I read a lot of horror, I watch a lot of horror movies. That kind of plays into the problem <laughs> a little bit, but Let's Get Invisible. Really, really good one. I can't believe a lot of people don't talk about that one more. It deserves a lot more credit, in my opinion. This one here, I've never read the book. I have seen the TV episode. I have the two-parter on DVD from when I was a kid, and it was uh, it was garbage from <laughs> what I remember. I don't know if it's any good or not. I hope it's better than I remember it being. Maybe I've grown up and matured more, possibly. I doubt it, but maybe. Uh, how I Got My Shrunken Head. I hope it's good. I don't know. I don't know. I like this old cover art, though, that Tim, Tim Jacobus did. It looks a lot better than the newer reissue cover art. Uh, this one always scared me on the cover of the DVD. This one here I'm real stoked to have a hardcover copy of. It's the original One Day at Horrorland. This is another one that caught my eye that made me want to buy the book series, uh, or this lot of books. And, uh, yeah... Pretty cool stuff, man. I'm really stoked to have this. One of my favorite out of Goosebumps. It's so freaking good. Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily scary from what I remember. It was one of the first ones I read when I got back into Goosebumps in 2018. But it was really good. It was really fun. It had so much enjoyability factor to it about being like a summer vacation type book. The rides that you experience with the main characters are really fun. But uh, it wasn't my favorite by any means. Uh, it was good, but not my favorite. Not my favorite at all. <clears throat> This one I've not read. Um, I've had a lot of people like recommend this to me. Like, I think Lou was one of them. I think <laughs> it was. Not looking forward to this one. Uh, piano lessons can be murder. Cool looking blue color. I have no desire to read this at all, even though I'm planning on doing it anyway. Yep. <laughs> I'll just put that in the pile over there and uh, act like it didn't happen. This one Lou has beat over my head to death, and I just I question Lou sometimes. I do. I love him, but I question him. Uh, chicken Chicken. Yes, I know. I have not read the book. I don't plan on reading the book for a while. A long while. But I got the hardcover to go with this lot. You best believe that this was in another lot, I would not have bought it. 
You best believe, because I have a big feeling I'm not going to like this book. Maybe it'll be silly. Maybe it'll be fun and goofy and whatnot. Maybe. I don't know. But I don't have much faith in that, and I... It's going to go on the pile right there. The next one here, a lot of people, including Grayson, have recommended to me over and over again. Cuckoo Clock of Doom hardcover. Really cool. Uh, a lot of torn out pages in the front of this book. Really, really ragged looking. Yeah. Really cool blue color, though. I like that. I hope this is good. This is one of the only books I ever found in a thrift shop. Not this particular copy, but the paperback copy I have when I was collecting still. Um, it was around the time that I made that video on my channel of me ranting about where are all the Goosebumps books. It was a big old rant of mine. And... That video was like 17 minutes long of me rambling, and that was the day that I actually went to, or around the days that I went to, and I found this book, the paperback copy of this book, in a thrift book, in a, in a thrift shop lo locally. We don't, we don't have a whole lot of stuff in our thrift shops. Uh, they don't usually just have books. So I was irritated over that, and I'm glad I at least had a copy of this that I found somewhere, because most places aren't carrying anything at all. It's a shame. One of my newer favorites that I found recently was Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes. Really love that. I have a paperback, or I have a hardcover and paperback copy of all the different versions, but now I have this. I recently got in the newest reissue cover as a hardcover library edition. It was cheap. It was on sale for like five bucks, but I got that, and now I have this one, the reissue cover. So uh, that's pretty cool. I pretty much have every, every version of hardcover and paperback for Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes. Uh, that's pretty cool. I really dug this book. It's one of those books like Not a Living Dummy and Not a Living Dummy 3 and 2 and, you know, books like that that I really love and just have every exception to buy everything I see of it just because I want every part of it. And this is another one of those, too, that I was really shut. I was could not believe that this was in the collection lot as well because it's one of my favorites. I can't believe people don't like this book. Ghost Beach. Oh, man. Oh, man. This book is in such good condition for what it is. I love Ghost Beach. If you've not read this, you are missing out. Do not listen to people tell you this book is bad. Give it a chance. Check it out yourself. It is a freaking good Goosebumps book. I don't know why people hate this so much. It is slow, but it has this urban legend feel. I always like to talk about that when it's in a Goosebumps book. This very urban legend myth feel to it that works so well. Ghost Beach is so great. I don't care what people say. You guys are haters. Uh, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Uh, here's one that I do not care about having a hardcover copy of, but I guess I have two now. I believe, I think, uh, Monster Blood. Mm, that's real bad. Real, real bad. Look at the pages, man. They're just destroyed. A lot of these books are, but they're old, and they came out of the 90s. They were library copies. It doesn't surprise me that they would be destroyed and be messy. This one here I'm not excited to read either. I like vampires when they're done like this, but I mostly stick more towards like the Lost Boys vampires. If you've seen that film, it's fantastic. If you're missing out, if you haven't. Um, Vampire Breath. Not really looking forward to this. Uh, I have a paperback, paperback copy, but uh, I don't care that much about owning it. It came in a lot. I'll put it in the stack right over there. Uh, this one here I know I have a hardcover copy of as well. I think it was the Orange Book. Though I could be wrong, but I think it was. It was My Best Friend is Invisible, you know, with the Invisible Boy from the Goosebumps film and from the TV show and all that stuff. I hope it's good. You know, there's a newer book from the Slappy World series called, like, uh, The Invisible Boy Strikes Again or something like that. I don't know. I hope it's good. Uh, this one here, a lot of people love. I think the cover is way, way, way better than the actual story itself. It's one of the first ever Goosebumps books I got from my grandmother on my, my dad's side. Excuse me. Um... And this one really baffled me. It was one of the two books, like, Legends of, Legend of the Lost Legend that my grandmother on my dad's side, like I said, got for me when I was a kid. All of my cousins and I were getting introduced to Goosebumps, and this is one of the first two that I got. Uh, Curse of Camp Cold Lake. Really, really, really spooky, creepy, terrifying-looking cover. If I ever had to do a list of my top, like, ten Goosebumps covers of all time, this would be up there. This is scary. This is one of those covers, like, Not a Living Dummy, the original Dummy book that has just one of those covers that Tim Jacobus came up with that I don't even know what kind of sicko could come up with this for kids. It was, the, again, the story is not really scary. The story has its moments. It has some interesting, very controversial things I could see being a problem for children's fiction, but that cover, that cover spooky. This book here, oh man, I did not think I was ever going to get a copy of this and the original cover and everything or reissue cover for hardcover library edition or anything like that. It's late, that's why I'm slurring my words, by the way. Uh, Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns. Oh, man. <laughs> when I saw this on the page for eBay, I, I immediately clicked buy. I didn't see much of anything else in the copy collection lot listing. But I saw this, 
and I grabbed it as soon as I realized it was a hardcover copy because I was stoked. You will not see very often uh, Attack of the Lawn or <laughs> Attack of the Jack O' Lanterns as a hardcover copy. Really cool. Really, really cool. There's two more here. Uh, two, well, one that's my favorite, and the other one I have not read yet, but I've seen the TV episode and I liked it a lot. Uh, this one is one of my favorites ever, and I've collected a lot of the hardcovers, a lot of the paperback versions of this. I'm like the only person on the planet that loves this book. It's You Can't Scare Me. It's one of those books like Ghost Speech that I adore and love, and nobody else seems to like it. It's a shame. It's a shame, because You Can't Scare Me is great. I'm really excited to have this reissue cover copy for hardcover, because it's that light blue reissue copy from like 2003 or five or whatever. I love You Can't Scare Me. It's one of my favorite urban legend feeling type Goosebumps books. It's so good and so underrated. No one gives this book the credit it deserves. It's a shame. But uh, yeah, now I have that. I'm really stoked about having that in the collection. And the final book here is one that everybody recommends to me all the time. Uh, I have not read it. I've seen the TV episode, like I said. But it is what it is. Uh, I hope the book is good. There's a lot of books. There's like three of these books now. Yeah, there's three. Uh, Say Cheese and Die. Hardcover copy. It's pretty cool having that. I'm glad to have it part of my collection. But that's really it, guys. I don't have anything else to show you or talk to you about. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm going to finally watch the Return of the Mummy episode after that really awful ending of that book. I've had a couple of days. I've had to just take a break and you know deal with some family stuff and some work stuff and everything. Rest up and relax a little bit where the sun's been gone. It's been raining all the time. It's been a mess. And working second shift doesn't help with that either with the rain stuff, you know. But anyway, I plan on watching the TV episode at some point this week. I'm going to try to get it out tomorrow if I can. Uh, I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm going to try my best. The thing is, <laughs> the thing is, I'm going to read the TV book after I read after I watch that TV episode. So the next review will be the TV book for the Return of the Mummy, and uh, hopefully you'll be patient for that, and we can talk about it and enjoy it. But hopefully this video was a nice little thing to kind of get you over until then. But thank you for watching. Thank you for being around and listening to me ramble and talk. But thank you even more for being around to see these books. I'm really excited about having all of these in the collection. I did not think I was getting 30 new Goosebumps books in this haul, especially as cheap as it was. But uh, God is good. God is good. Got a really good collection here going. Uh, there's some stuff here I'm hoping that I'll have one day that nobody else will have. Like the other week I bought the um, Goosebumps Wanted the Haunted Mask, which is one of my favorite books, if not my very favorite book ever from Goosebumps. One of the newer Goosebumps books, too. And I got a proof copy, one that people were reading like for review purposes and whatnot. And, edit, and it was like uncorrected and unedited entirely to where it needed to be. So I'm really stoked about stuff like that, having that in my collection and being able to talk about that and point that out to people when I bring people over to my house and stuff. But uh, yeah, I know Goosebumps is a weird thing to find some pride in collecting, but I have it and I'm not going to care. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being around and thank you for listening to me ramble and everything else. Like I said, thank you for being patient with me and my timetables right now. There's a lot of stuff going on. Maybe I can talk about it in the future. I don't know, but I'm also working on some new books on the side, aside from my usual short story collection I'm working on for kids, but I also have some other stuff I'm doing like a new verse novel and stuff. But uh, anyway, what are your thoughts on all this stuff? All these books, again, please avoid spoilers down in the comment section down below. Please don't ruin them for me. Please don't, please don't. I'm begging you. Anyway, may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you guys today. And, uh, Goodbye.